did it, Jill. You're gonna be the next president of the United States. <laughs> There's still a lot of work to be done to make it very clear that women are exceptionally qualified and capable of being the Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America. In America, we have two systems of justice. One in which certain people are held accountable, and another in which powerful people, like Donald Trump, escape accountability altogether. I keep thinking about that 25-year-old Indian woman, all of five feet tall, who gave birth to me at Kaiser Hospital in Oakland, California. On that day, she probably could have never imagined that I would be standing before you now and speaking these words. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. I should be calling you Senator Harris, no, right? No, you should not. That's not on my birth certificate. Okay. Call, Comma? Call me yes, please. Okay, because the Indian in me, I feel like my parents, <laughs> my dad will watch this. Just don't call me auntie. Okay. <laughs> it's not Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's Kamala. So I'm going to ask you one last time. Are you willing to ask the White House to authorize the FBI to investigate the claims that have been made against you? Innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them. My entire career, I have been opposed, personally opposed to the death penalty, and that has never changed. The only way to meaningfully access police brutality is through comprehensive reforms, including reforms to hold bad officers accountable for misconduct. You know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools, and she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me.